everyone and welcome to another SQL tutorial with Learn at No Star. Today we are going to write a SQL query to address a very common requirement which is to change the format of date and time fields. So let's get started. So I recently came across a requirement to extract the period from a date column. So for example, the date here is 31st October 2023 and the period had to be in YYYY MM format, which means I wanted the period to be 2023-10. So I needed to extract that period from this date. So the first thing that came to my mind was to extract the year. and the month part from the state column and then I could concatenate them to generate the period. Now concatenating them is not that simple. You first need to convert them to varchar columns because otherwise it is just going to add them up. So you have to use a cast. And convert them to string values and, and then concatenate them with a plus operator which is going to give you the correct result in this scenario. But if you have a single digit month, so let's change this to March. And if we run this query, then again, you have the problem that it's a single digit. So it did not concatenate it to MM. And then you need to add a zero over here and some extra logic to extract just the last two characters. So you can see that we had to write a significant piece of code to achieve this. There could be another solution using the replace function, which would be a little neat. So we can just use replace and replace the hyphens in our date field with an empty value. And then we have to use the right function or the left function rather to extract the left six values from this. And this is going to give us the correct result as well. But do you know there's an easier way to handle this scenario? There are two functions in SQL Server which can be used. One is the convert function and one is the format function. So let's see how to use the convert function. So you just need to say select convert and then you have to define the target type that which is the target data type. You can say a varchar or an nvarchar if you require that. And let's make it 10. And then you have to give your date field. So this is a date field. And then you have to specify in what format you want the output. So the format, there are some specific formats defined for the convert function. Let's say 112 and then execute our query. So you can see your results are 20, 23, 03, 31. So the hyphens have been removed. Let's say we go for 102 and execute, you will see that now you get the date in the format 2023.03.31. So there are country specific formats, date formats, which are used. So there are some other kind of standard formats for Europe. There might be some other kind of standard format for America and so on. So you can convert the date in those formats using the convert function and writing in the correct code value for this parameter. So on the Microsoft website, you can find out these codes. So if it is 101, it takes the US standard and it is mm dd yy And then you can have 102 for the values with the dots in it. You can have 103 to have British or French format with dd, mm, yy and so on. Now coming back to our original requirement of extracting the period from the state value. So this can be conveniently done here by just putting 112. And as we saw earlier that if you put 112, it just replaces all the hyphens and gives us the value in the form of yyyymmdd. Now if I just want the period, which is yyyymm, what I can do, I can either go ahead and put a left over here and extract just the six characters, the first six characters out of it. This is going to give me that value. Or an easier way to do this would be just to 
just to restrict my characters right here when I am converting this date value to a string value. So instead of saying character 10, which is going to have all the characters, I'm just going to specify it and stop it as wildcat 6. So if I execute this query, I'm just going to get the six characters in the output, which are going to be my yyyymm. So this can be done easily. Now, this does require looking up your code values to understand what exactly is the format you're going to get in the output. So if that seems confusing to you, there's another function that can be used, which is the format function. Now, this is more explanatory in itself. So what you can do is simply give the value that you want converted. So add date value, and then you can just define in what format you want the value. So let's say I want the output as dd dot mm dot y y y y. Then this is your custom format that you can specify. Now this format function can also be used for converting between other data types. So you can convert between in a specific number format in a specific string format. But right now for this video tutorial, we are only restricting it to our information about using it for converting it into different date and time formats. So if this is your function, and you try to execute it, you will get the values 31.00.2023. So it did extract the date part, it did extract the year part, but the month part seems to be wrong. Why this is wrong is because this small case mm actually denotes minutes as in time part, the hours and the minutes. And since we have no time component to our date value, that's why it is giving 00, 00 as the output. So if you want to denote month, you have to use mm in capitals. And now you should be able to get the right result. So it is 31.03.2023. So you can have it in any format that you want. You can just keep on playing with the format. Maybe you want as dd hyphen mm hyphen yyyy. That can be done as well. If you just execute it, you can get the date value in that format. Now, as far as formatting the time part is concerned, so that can be done as well. You simply need to write your format query, pass it a date time value. So I'm going to pass this time assist date time value so that it has a time component to it and then pass the formatting of your time component. So for passing the formatting of your time component, you need to start with n, put a quote and then simply define your formatting. So hh colon mm. And then let's say TT, TT it will specify whether you see AM, PM or not. And now let's execute our queries. So you can see in the third part, in the third output that you have over here, it says 331 PM. So it specifies the PM with it. If you just do a T and execute this, you will just get a P. So that is not standard. We mostly want to have a PM or an AM appended to the time. If you want it in that format, then you can simply specify the TD over here. And if you remove it, and if you remove this TT part and just let it be like this and execute the query, you will just get it as 332 which again is an incorrect value because the actual time right now is 3.32 p.m. So it's not 0, 3. It should be 3 added to 12, which is it should give us 15.32 on a 24-hour clock. So to get that value, you need to use uppercase at here. So you have to be specific about these things. And if you execute it right, you will get 15.33, which is the time based on a 24-hour clock. So this is how you can use these two functions, convert and format, to play around with the data and time formatting. It is very handy in various scenarios because we actually need to convert data and times in different formats to have the correct understanding and correct representation even when we are creating a report. So these functions are very useful and I hope that you had a good understanding of these functions watching this video. I hope the video was useful. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.